I've actually been in the forest sleeping and heard a tiger roar. I was doing a bit of research and reading books on tigers, uh, and I learned that they make uh, a greeting noise called Proustin on a chuff, and it sounds like like that. And I remember going to a zoo and trying that out on one of the tigers there, and the tiger replied back. And so I had this experience where I was sort of on speaking terms with tigers, and that just completely blew my mind. I think tigers can be aggressive. Uh, if you were to come across a tiger with cubs, or if you come across a tiger with prey, it might want to defend itself. Uh, but I think in general, tigers want to avoid people as much as possible. People are bad news for tigers. Normally a tiger, if it hears a person, it just wants to, it just wants to leave. Uh, with tigers, you tend to know what you're gonna get. With people, they can be quite dangerous. You get poachers in the forest with, that are armed. And, and so I was more afraid of people than I was tigers. Well, first of all, hi, Lewin, age four. Thank you for your question. Uh, tigers have fur for a few reasons. Uh, one is to protect them from things like insects or injuries. And the other reason is, especially for tigers, it helps them in camouflage. So they have individual patterns of stripes that allow them to, that allow them to blend into their environment and can sneak up on their prey. Places like India where it gets to 40 degrees. Um, yeah, I wouldn't want to be wearing a fur coat. Newborn tigers do have stripes, um, and fun fact, tigers actually have striped skin as well. So if you were to shave a tiger, you'd find that it has stripes on its skin, but I would not advise trying to shave a tiger. Hi Herb, age four. Uh, four and a half. Hi Herb, age four and a half. It's thought that tigers run about 30 miles per hour, or about 50 kilometers an hour, so you really don't want to run afoul of a tiger because it will catch you. So tigers are actually quite large and quite heavy. So while they're able to run 30 miles per hour in very short periods of time, they really can't sustain that over long distances. And so that's why one of the reasons why tigers have uh, evolved an ambush style hunting strategy. So they want to get as close to their prey as possible by hiding in bushes and being very quiet, uh, using their whiskers to navigate through grass, being as close to their prey as possible. And then at the last moment, charging and grabbing that animal. So tigers are thought to be orange uh, because it actually helps them camouflage. Tigers are really obvious to us, but their prey actually see orange and green color quite similarly. And so they actually can blend in quite well to their environment. And so that actually helps them camouflage and sneak up to their prey. Tigers are really stinky. Uh, for anyone that's had a cat, uh, Tiger urine smells like that, but 10 times stronger. I worked with tigers in zoos for uh, a few years as a volunteer, and so I got to know that smell very well. So tigers communicate via scent, and I think scent has more to do with being able to recognize individuals than sort of sight. I can't comment specifically on that, but there is a difference in large cats, such as tigers, and small cats, like uh, domestic cats, uh, specifically in a bone called the hyoid bone in their throat. In large cats, the bone is actually cartilaginous, and so that enables them to roar, but not purr. Uh, but in smaller cats, it's actually a hard bone, and so that enables them to purr. So tigers, unfortunately, can't purr, uh, but they can roar. Small cats can purr, but they can't roar. I've actually been in the forest sleeping and heard a tiger roar. So we could hear it getting closer and closer and closer. It was walking along a road and then it started to get quieter and quieter and quieter. And the cool thing was we actually had camera traps on that road and so we could see which individual that was. But it was definitely a uh, stop and listen kind of moment and oh, what do we do? There's might be a tiger showing up in camp. <laughs> Uh, for actually researching tigers, uh, we use uh, camera traps, so trail cams. So when an animal walks in front of it, it's going to detect that there's heat or movement and take a photo from here. And this is the white flash. It's thought that maybe white flash could bother them. In my experience, I've not really seen 
any, any evidence that tigers really care a whole lot. We have camera trap video of a flash going off and the tiger looking up, so maybe they think it's gonna rain. <laughs> Thankfully, I have not been chased by a tiger. I don't think if I was chased by a tiger, I would still be here. I've gotten into myself, gotten into a lot of situations where there is that kind of adventure and just by accident. I actually had forgot some equipment at a camera trap location that we had visited before. And so I ran back along this trail and I stopped because like the back of my, the hair on the back of my neck was sort of standing on end and I stopped and I listened and I could hear something moving in the forest just out of view. The forest was so thick I couldn't see anything, but I just had this really weird feeling. And then I went up the trail a little bit more and I was just hit with this really strong scent of tiger urine. And I'm convinced that a tiger had marked that tree, heard me coming and just slipped right out of the forest. I guarantee there have been times where I have been watched by tigers and I just had no idea. So. That's a pretty intimidating experience for me. That's a very, very good question. And I think there's a misconception that in order to help tigers or other biodiversity, you need to become a scientist, you need to have a PhD or something like that. And I think that's not true because tigers are endangered less because of tigers themselves and more to do with human activity. And so you think, I, I think we need people from all different parts of society to lend their skills to tiger conservation. You need people that are going to help fundraise, you need people that are uh, can engage with government and decision makers, and you need you need people from many different backgrounds and so people in, in their different careers can sort of guide their own way into conservation if they have that kind of interest. In a very positive way I have to say. I, I've been able to go to some really spectacular wild places where wildlife can still exist. And, and just walking around areas where tigers still occur is a quite humbling experience. I wish I could transport people there and share that experience with them because I think it enables a connection with nature that I think is really needed right now. I think people, especially in urban areas, they don't get the opportunity to go out and see some of these wild places. And so I really wish I could share that experience with them because it's, it's really life changing. really a profound question. I think if I, if I were to classify tigers, I'd classify them as introverts. They tend to uh, do their own thing. They're solitary. They occur over wide ranges and they sort of do their own thing and they only really come together to mate or fight. And so I think they're, I'm not sure if they feel loneliness the way humans do, um, but it's possible. Not like these extroverted lions that love to hang out in groups. <laughs>